Dr. Kazat, what uh, types of conditions do you generally see uh, in your practice? In my office, I primarily see women with very heavy menstrual bleeding, um, pelvic pain. Um, we see a number of annual examinations, but uh, a number of problem situations also. What are the, the variety of uh, issues that women come to you uh, with questions about? Teenagers will often come in um, seeing, my, seeing me for pain, pelvic pain and severe menstrual cramps. Um, women in their 20s and 30s will come in primarily for well visit exam uh, and then further on in the age gamut are menopausal symptoms and perimenopausal medicine and postmenopausal medicine. Why don't you tell us about some of the reasons why women might visit you for endometriosis? Endometriosis is a condition where young people, young women can have severe menstrual pain, pain before the menstrual cycle, pain at mid-cycle. Um, it's a benign condition where the lining of the uterus grows outside of the uterus, to be very honest. Uh, it can be treated in a number of ways, medically uh, or surgically. Um, in teenagers, we tend to use birth control pills frequently. Um, not only does it help with their symptomatology, it actually helps suppress the endometriosis also. Um, there are medications, so one of which is called Depolupron, that suppresses endometriosis. And for people who don't want to go the medical route, surgical intervention is certainly an, op uh, an option. Perhaps you could clarify the various types of hysterectomies. The traditional hysterectomy, often called total abdominal hysterectomy or total hysterectomy, refers to removing the uterus and the cervix together. There's a procedure referred to as a supracervical hysterectomy, which has been receiving a lot of press, primarily because it retains the cervix and it leaves the cervix in place for a woman. There are various reasons to do that in arguments regarding pelvic support and sexual function. If a woman has been given the, the advice to have a hysterectomy, should she seek a second opinion? Often I'll suggest a second opinion for my own patients and for other patients if there's a question as to the diagnosis or if they're wondering if there are surgical alternatives or medical alternatives to their treatment. The vast majority of procedures that are being done by way of traditional surgery can be completed safely and effectively by way of minimally invasive technique and robotic procedures. More and more procedures are now being performed robotically uh, at Wilkesburg General Hospital. Why don't you tell us what procedures you perform surgically uh, with the robot? Robotically, my main procedure is hysterectomy. The advantage to robotic surgery, it's obviously a far less minimally invasive technique. You often, you're on your feet far sooner. Um, often discharged the same day, can be back to work in a week to do. Where do you think uh, the future of uh, robotic surgery lies? And Gynecologically, I believe that there will be more procedures being performed. There are a number of robotic, advanced robotic surgeons performing abdominal sacral copalpexies through minimally invasive technique. Uh, the GYN cancer surgeons are using it more and more to do lymph node dissections. Um, I believe that as more residents are being trained and for the fellow surgeons are being trained robotically, uh, that more um, hysterectomies will be performed by way of minimally invasive technique. So are most patients potential candidates for robotic surgery? Yes. Many patients are led to believe that they cannot have minimally invasive surgical technique due to previous abdominal surgeries, due to body habitus, due to uterine size. There are still 600,000 open abdominal hysterectomies performed in the United States each year. The vast majority of those can indeed be completed by way of minimally invasive technique. Now many patients come to you with dysfunctional bleeding. So why don't you talk about some of the treatment options that are available for that condition? There are both medical and surgical approaches to dysfunctional bleeding. A younger individual certainly is a candidate for birth control pill use or for progesterone-only suppression. There are several surgical techniques. Hysterectomy, obviously, is the last resort. There's a procedure called an endometrial ablation, which is a minimally invasive technique that destroys the lining of the uterus in order to control heavy bleeding patterns. Many women come to you uh, to treat the symptoms of menopause. Why don't you tell, tell us about what the symptoms are and what the various treatment approaches are? There are many symptoms to menopause. Most commonly is hot flushes, although people can have night sweats, mood swings, decreased libido or sexual drive, 
the main condition is no menstrual period for six months to a year, depending on who, whose definition you're following. Many women present to the office seeking alternative treatments. Those alternative treatments can be herbal remedies, non-hormonal ways to control the hot flushes. Often in our office, people seek bioidentical hormone therapy. Essentially, bioidentical hormones are hormones that replace what a woman's body was making before she went through menopause. It's the same estrogen, the same progesterone, and the same testosterone. The nice thing about bioidentical hormones is we can often tailor them to the specific needs of an individual. Some individuals need more estrogen, some need more progesterone, some need testosterone in addition to the estrogen and progesterone to help them feel more quote-unquote normal.